Welcome everyone to Viva Las Vegas, the second time this season for the JBL Cup Series race number 20 here tomorrow night. Well, not tomorrow night, in a couple of nights, but first we got part-time qualifying, uncharted qualifying here for the J uh, JBL Cup Series season. I'm Nathan Sapin, aka I'm in race 97, and I'm joined by Ponsonic for one of the rare times up here in the JBL Cup Series booth, so welcome to Las Vegas and welcome back up to the booth. Thank you for having me for the uh, very few cup races that I do. It's, very, it's a very nice treat that I get to come up and commentate for one of these spectacular cup races that we've been having to, to witness. We've been having a pretty good championship battle, especially with what took place at Charlotte, which was a fantastic race with, with all accounts with what happened. I mean, the, the dumping, and I guess you could say was adding to the excitement. I guess you could say that you know, the surprise winner, the big one, you know, a lot of things shook up everything, it seemed. Yeah, Charlotte uh, did not disappoint at all this season. The Colt 600 was amazing, and then the Advanced Hub was 500 last time out. During the day th uh, this time was also amazing. Where we saw Skylar Taylor get the, four, uh, get the first win and only the fourth start. So, who knows, could we see a upset again? At Las Vegas, we are in Las Vegas, someone could gamble and possibly win. Of course, earlier on in the season, we were here at Las Vegas, very, very early in the season, part of the West Coast Swing. And that was a day race, and this is a night race. We kind of know, similar to what we might see here, um, Tyler will play into a factor later in the one, not, not in the first part of the one, so that might play it into a factor. And the draft might play into a massive factor here. So, uh, what do you think might play into effect knowing that is a night race at Vegas, uh, Las Vegas instead of a day race? I definitely think that, uh, for mentioned draft will definitely play a factor as we're kind of already seeing it right now with the 62 and the 66 helping each other there on the straightaway. And, you know, we definitely gotta watch out for them straightaways, seeing like if people can get a runner on each other, trying to make the pass. So, Something will be interesting how that shakes up uh, and how it'll be a part of the race long term. But also, yeah, that tire wear. And we saw a big time at Charlotte how it could affect. I mean, we saw big lap times drop off mm -hmm. within a handful of laps for sure. Yeah, Vegas, well, not Vegas, Charlotte had a lot of tire wear and uh, not going to see quite as significant. But uh, one thing that we will have to keep an eye on is the difference in. The ends one and two is so more uh, is so much more bumpy than three and four, especially on this inside lane. So the outside lane might be the place to be. Why do I say that? This is is actually doing a good job on the inside lane of the, um, toy gossip. But uh, most of the time, the inside lane is not really one to be in one and two, especially on the long one. And three and four is very even, so that could play into a factor. As so far, it is the number 66 fastest on the board. A 28.783, and then it's the 91 of Eric Drew, Marlon Kennington, and uh, Danny Tron, who is side by side with the 66. And these two have been side by side in multiple laps here. Talking about how massive the bumps are in the corner is the 62. Arian Ton now makes his way down to the pits. Maybe he wasn't wasn't happy with that run. Maybe he's going to make some adjustments. His team will. But talk about you know those bumps, Ronald Kennington now. But those bumps definitely play a huge part in this car. It is a very error sensitive car that you know the smallest thing could upset it big time and like it could drop you off by two tenths. And seeing how competitive the field is this year, it definitely like every tenth, every second. Every 100th definitely matters. Everything counts here. Yeah, for the ultra competitive season, Ford has been the dominant manufacturer. I keep on saying it, but they somehow, somewhere, they have had the m more uh, male dominance than everyone else and just been dominant this season. And of course, we have two Fords in the top four fastest here, and both of them are MPM Motorsports. And now they are one, two has the 55 to the top of the board goes Clark Pajano the third. Eric Drew definitely is helping the the 60, or is the the 50, the yeah the 55 in some way, but 
I mean, I, I know which way it is. It's the, the pushing, the arrow push. Definitely a big part of this brand new car that is pretty sleek. Definitely has a lot of aerodynamic uh, efficiencies to it, but as for mentioned, it definitely has its you know, upsets with its uh, sensitivity to the slightest thing, slightest wind change, slightest uh, track differentiate. So, yeah, it's just a lot of variables that play into this car that definitely hand itself to the drivers and, you know, we get some crazy stuff, we get some crazy events, we get some crazy storylines to, to go into, like Charlotte. I, I, I keep going back to it, but, my gosh, that, that was an entertaining race that had a lot of storylines, exactly mm -hmm. what this car was made to create. Yeah, it definitely had a whole list of storylines and, uh, Charlotte, once again, I think both of the Charlotte races this year, the 500 and 600, put on some of the best races all season long, especially for mile and a half is concerned and have to see if what this one can do for Las Vegas. Of course, three of the last four races are mile and a half for these drivers, uh, minus a oddball mile long race track for Phoenix next week for the second to last race of the season. But then it's Homestead we will have the finale once again for the fourth season in a row for the Power Truck Series and JBL Cup Series. And uh, right now, with three and a half minutes to go, following any uh, time resets and uh, some extra clock, right now it's looking pretty good for Clock Push on the third, the 66 of Toy Gossett, the 91 of Ed's Rue, and the 44 of Ronald Kennington. And unfortunately for the guy that's made the most sales to see out of anyone for these part timers in a bunch of colors. Ransom Smith Jr. has not gone in uh, any draft of anyone, and he is the slowest caller with the 29 117. Yeah, kind of shocking stuff. They have, you know, big support from RCR, all that RCR aerodynamics and engine. That's all RCR essentially mm -hmm. right there. He just does not have a charter to lock himself into. So. I know that I know they haven't been on their top form this year, but you know, I mean, there's kind of no excuses. That's essentially an RCR car that you should have no problem making, um, making almost every single race. Going back to what you said about the last uh, handful of races here in the season, as we have two and a half minutes left, uh, you made this announcement uh, earlier, but. Homestead will not be returning as a finale for either series, so that's definitely going to play its hand into what may be, you know, the circulating replacement race. It, could it be a super speedway? Could it be a short track? We don't know. So that's definitely going to be uh, something to watch out for, and definitely breaking up the mile and a half next season. While it may not play an effect this year, definitely will next year. Again, storylines. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as Quantum mentioned, it, if we're not in the Discord server. A couple of days ago, I made the an, an announcement that unfortunately Homestead will not be with, uh, returning as the, the season finale. They will still be on the, the season 5 schedule without a doubt, but uh, not going to be on the schedule as the finale. At this time, I have no clue of what the finale will end up being, but uh, what ends up being the finale, I'm sure the uh, official support Power Cut Series and JBL Cut Series will figure out a fantastic racetrack to host the new finale. And uh, with a minute to go, it's looking pretty good. I think tires have definitely fallen off at this point. Yeah, it's about six tenths of a second now for the 55 and he's done 12, 13 laps. So definitely as the one gets longer, as he's gonna pull it down into the pits, he's definitely gonna be in. As the one gets longer about 10 15 laps that's when Tyler starts into effect massively and uh one thing i will say is that with this version of the charlotte we ride off a ton of four it's gonna be very very sketchy because the early caution or two because of it hopefully we don't but las vegas and this version who knows here in las vegas for the bet engine for it tomorrow night as it will be unless anything changes here the 55, 66, 91, and 44 to make it into race 20 on the season. It almost seems like when you ride up on the high side of this track, the, the wall almost jets out. It doesn't. It's just you're carrying so much momentum into the last corner, and you're expecting a little bit more room, and then the wall is right there, and you clap it. So, as we almost saw with the 33, he was running really high there. 
So hopefully we don't see that come race time, but hopefully viewers at home know what I'm talking about. 20 seconds left, side by side with Ronald Kennington Jr. on the inside and Eric Drew. Now that they sorted out single file, two Chevys, mind you. Uh, Kennington currently inside the top five. Actually, both of them are inside mm. the top five. Five seconds left, plus the reset. So hopefully we'll uh, they'll add something spicy to to the race to come come race time here in two days. Yeah, great to see Eric really making it into the um, race here. He's he made a handful of races to start the season, but not made too many starts since then. The track house as a whole kind of fell off after at least five of the season, I think, and uh, really unfortunate because Obeyo looked to be one of the strongest, but Eric Drew is going to finally make it into another event, as it will be the 55, 66, 91, and 44 that will make it into the Bet MGM 400 here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Club Jean the third toy, Gossett, MBM 1-2, they will make it into the show for both of them, uh, in both cars, and then Trackhouse in the number nine, uh, 91 of Eric Drew, and then uh, the number 44 of Ronald Kennington as well. Baton, Crash, Parrish, Green, Ruiz, and Smith Jr., they will have to wait until Phoenix Raceway next week here on the channel to try to make it into AJBL Cup Series event. Only two more chances for them in season number four. Watson, also final thoughts before race number 20 on the season for season four of the Power. Uh, not Power Tour Series, uh, JBL Cup Series here in a couple of, of nights. Well, since we're in the land of being lucky, I, I hope that these top five have brought some pretty good cars, some pretty good engines, pretty good strategy, because they're definitely going to need it. Everybody else, they have a good hand. Let's just hope that the top five have a better one. Let's hope they strike gold. Yeah, for sure. And uh, who knows, Las Vegas, you can gamble and win, and we have to see if who can gamble and win here in a couple of nights here on the channel and uh, until next time and uh, until tomorrow for Watkins Glen for the Power Twat series we will see you guys then bye bye